This is Devin Gallaty with Writing Daily, where we get together and we talk about writing and writerly things and how to live and lead the writer's life. And uh, I'm your host. My name is Devin Gallaty. I am the editor in chief of In the No Traveler. Um, I have an MFA in creative writer writing, and I'm also. Uh, the author of the forthcoming memoir, 10,000 Miles with My Dead Father's Ashes. Actually, I've got a lot of fun stuff going on with that right now. I think we're probably going to save that for a tomorrow podcast. Uh, but for today, I have, so this is, by the way, I'm going to back up just a tiny bit. I have um, one of my favorite people, Helen Kirkby, who wrote a book on occultism. And I know this is going to like, most people are going to go, what, what? But that's fine. Don't worry. Just sit back and check it out. And I'll explain kind of why I was so excited to have her here. But she wrote this book. It's beautiful. I have an autographed copy myself. It's called The Brazen Serpent. Helen's going to tell us all about that. Um, and so I guess before, first off, hello, Helen. How are you? Hi, thank you for having me. I'm good. I'm very good. <laughs> I, I'm so glad. It's great to see your face. Um, so how do I say it? Why? One of the reasons why I wanted to have Helen on, A, is she just, she just finished this book and now it's out and it's a beautiful hardbound edition. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but she writes about something that most people tend to not. And so she writes about occultism. She writes about Kabbalah. She writes about Thelema. Uh, and what's interesting about those kinds of topics, and, and many of you may not be really familiar with those topics. I happen to be at kind of love that sort of stuff. But for a lot of people, it's, it's what's important to understand is that you're talking about really, really abstract ideas. In other words, it's, it's very different than saying, you know, the, the fire truck is racing down the street. We're talking about theoretical ideas and concepts that largely come from uh, traditional Kabbalah that eventually kind of uh, were massaged and changed slightly or had uh, different interpretations changed that came through modern occultism, uh, it, it largely through uh, the uh, mystical Golden Dawn order of the late 1800s. We're not gonna go into the, the deep history about all that. And for those who don't know, I wanted to say a little something about Helen, her biography. So what do we got here? We got Helen is a ninja super spy and shark wrangler. I don't know if that's helping that anybody. <laughs> it is though. It's yeah. Yeah, no, that I think that I think that suits you to a T. Uh, many people hearing that may not get it, but I kind of love it. <laughs> so it fills it it fills my heart with joy. So Helen, can you tell us what? Well, first off, how, you know, this book is, how would you describe this book to somebody who probably isn't sort of like the dead on person for it? How would you describe it to the layman? I think it would be, it's basically abstract enough that you can um, personalize it when you read it in your interpretation. But it's also, I think, concrete enough that you know it it builds on a tradition of this kind of sort yeah i i think in in reading it myself i found it very accessible there's a, a lot of occult writers that you know again because you're describing abstract ideas it tends to get very dense and perhaps confusing uh and i think you do a really good job at um making ideas clear uh how did you how did you get to first off how did you find this particular because obviously if you're writing a big thick beautiful book like this uh what was the inspiration to kind of get you started well it's well the hermetic kabbalah which is what it's about is something that i have dedicated my life in studying and placing every moment that has ever meant something to me on this tree you know that uses in Kabbalah and so when I first began writing it it wasn't a book it was all made of journal entries and um, so I guess I never intended to write a book but it became a book and I'm very happy that it became that. 
So, so I, I love how it sort of fell together for you. So can I ask um, if you can define hermetic Kabbalah or maybe hermetic and then maybe Kabbalah separately so people can kind of get a sense of, of more of what you're covering here? Well, I think that you can probably describe it much better than I from your own Kabbalah classes. Um, but it's a very specific branch of Kabbalah that's not, you know, traditional, but it did come from um, a lot of work built on years and years and through orders like the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, as you mentioned. Yes, um, all of that's true. And just a matter of fact, I brought a little show and tell back here. This is a variation of the tree of life. Whoops, there we go. There we go. Wow. So that, that is a variation of the tree of life. I'm just sharing it because a lot of what is covered here sort of delves into the ideas that you will find on the tree of life. Uh, the particular variation that I just showed uh, has more to do, again, with kind of more of a modern occultism sensibility than, say, shall we say, traditional Judaism Kabbalah, but they are related and they do focus on, on similar principles, of course, one is much more about focusing on, uh, shall we say, how to be a better, a better practicing Jew. Um, and uh, the other being sort of like, how do I find ecstatic enlightenment and work within the universe in the most optimal way? Sound, sound fairly good? I think that's perfectly stated. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. So what attracted you? Because again, I, you know, just, we have to spend so much time trying to just kind of like inviting other people in. So what was the thing that attracted you? To the Hermetic Kabbalah or? Yeah. What the, was, what was the thing that inspired you? Um, I, in my younger years was searching for a comprehensive philosophy of the world. And so I did a lot of research into Gnosticism, um, Hermeticism, and came across the Kabbalah. And since then, I, I think that, yeah, you just get sucked into it. And then you find that it, it suits itself to your life almost. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I completely agree. So uh, what, the way the book appears to be laid out is that you kind of talk about the paths. In other words, those have to deal with the Hebrew alphabet. Um, and then, of course, the actual spheres, the sephiroth. Uh, and then you even talk about uh, what's called the three veils of knot, sort of like the, the pre-thought process, for lack of yeah. a better description. Uh, after you worked on this, uh, and as you described as journal entries, what were the... Th what what was the thing, I mean, was there an aha moment for you where it was like, oh, you know what, I need to share this stuff with other people. Like, can you take us on that journey of, of what that looked like and how that came to be? I think that I am still on that path. It's still unbelievable to me that I have a book. It's still, <laughs> yeah, it's still very <laughs> surprising to me. I I feel like I feel good about it, but I can't say that, you know, it was very planned or that I, there was a moment even, maybe the whole moment was adding up from my life, maybe just needed ha to happen, I think. So, but, so then how did it, how did it come to be? Was there, um, in other words, did somebody else read it and say, hey, this needs to be a, a thing? Or did you wake up one morning and or did you go to a cocktail party and run into a publisher? How did that go? Because many of us, you know, to, to actually end up with a book is a lot of work. So you've, you've you know, <laughs> you've made it happen. Well, thank you. I, um, I think at the time I was trying out um, writing fiction and submitting short stories and I was really trying to get into that route um, but that never really got anywhere for me so I thought wow I have so much material that I just generate 
day upon day. And, you know, if I can make it into a comprehensive whole, I think that it's something I can contribute to, to the world. <laughs> I, I, I love that you did that. So is there a certain section in the book that you think uh, is part that was sort of the most enlightening for you? I mean, I realize that a lot of what we're talking about is kind of uh, very introspective and personal, but was there one piece where you said, okay, I'm reading, I'm, I'm, I'm doing some writing on the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, Aleph, and then something happened where it was like, okay, I've learned some really wonderful tidbits about this really huge field of understanding. Well, I think my favorite part is the end, actually, um, Aleph, the path of Aleph, where I uh, included an essay on memory, which was, I don't know, I, I'm quite happy about that, that particular section. <laughs> I, did it, were these things, because you, you mentioned that you write every day, was this something, I mean, was there a point where you had to go back and organize and edit, and how did that take shape for you? That was surprisingly less painful, I guess, than the whole process of writing it. But uh, I didn't put it together until the very end when I decided, you know, this, this needs to be a book. Um, whether it's a book that I will just kind of keep on to myself or whether other people are interested. Um, it's very surprising to me that it's had such good reception. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not going to stop writing. And I, I thought that, you know, even before I published the book. <laughs> so. so what did you, so how did you find your publisher? I mean, obviously, I think, because you're sort of in a, if you don't mind me saying, you're sort of in a, in a cult universe. In other words, obviously, just, you know, studying something that, that is unusual has its own social network, I'm assuming. Yes? Yes. <laughs> so how did you do, you, do you mind if I ask how you found the publisher? Um, was, was it something that was easy to do? And how did that, how did that work out? Well, um, there are very, very good publishers all around, you know, even in such a niche community of occult books. And, uh, you know, I did my research and I submitted to pretty much all of them. <laughs> so the same kind of formula I was doing with fiction, I had a lot of research. <laughs> and it worked out. It did, yeah. So does that mean you're working on a, a next book now that you're still, you, because you mentioned you're still writing? Yes, I am actually uh, with my husband who also writes. So we kind of, you know, have a book coming out together next year. And is it also sort of like a, an occult themed idea? It is, but it's, I think, much more accessible <laughs> to everyone else <laughs> or everyone. So, can, can you give us a, a little hint about what that might be? Like it, what, is, what its general subject matter is? It is of magic, but it will be using modern language and science and, you know, the theory of memes as a living entity that can actually um, affect the universe, of which is also made of information, memes. <laughs> so it's memetic magic, Codex Memetica. Wow, that sounds uh, fascinating. I totally love that. I'm going to get that. Um, and so when is that supposed to be coming out? Sometime next year. We don't know yet. Oh, okay. So it's still in the yeah. planning stage. Is the book done? Uh, it will soon be going into editing. So a um, couple of months, maybe a year. It's hard to say with these things, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a challenging process for sure. I, I you know one question that I have because while you said this new book is even more accessible than the Brazen Serpent, mm -hmm. what I'm curious to know is how did you when you were writing it were you were you thinking of including because I found it accessible were you thinking of including it um, you know did you have a, a you know a reader outside of its niche so to speak in mind when you started writing it. 
Um, the brazen serpent, I did not. So, uh, you know, I've had um, mixed reviews on that kind of uh, specific point, but usually good. But you know, usually within the niche occult community. So, sure. you know, <laughs> if um, someone isn't as well read as you or you know the other very niche occult people, then I think that they will find a lot more out of this next book. Oh, well, that's, that's going to be fun. And so are you writing that with, uh, with uh, shall we say, a broader, a broader perspective in mind? Yes, yes. <laughs> and and how, did that, how did that affect your writing, or did it? Oh, it, I learned how to write differently, and it was good for me. And um, yeah, I guess I'm, it's good to know that I'm still growing and that there's, you know, so much more. And yeah. I'm just excited to keep on. Well, congratulations, and, and Helen. It's it's wonderful. So, how if if somebody is interested in the brazen serpent, uh, how would they uh, either they would find it? How would they track you down? So, two questions there. Um, well, they could uh, follow my Instagram, my Facebook, or just go to the the WordPress site <laughs> for the book. So that so, would be uh, uh, the brazen serpent dot wordpress dot com. So that is just to uh, clarify, we're spelling that T H E B R A Z E N S E R P E N T dot wordpress dot com. Correct. Correct. Wonderful. And and can they also buy it through the publisher? Oh yes, of course. But, you know, if you want to sign copy for the, <laughs> then go through that site. Yeah. Oh, so that's that's the best choice because this way people will get a signed copy like the one I have. Yes. And so if they want to find you on Instagram, do you have uh, uh, an address for people or an at that we should know about for Instagram or Facebook? Yeah. Uh, my Instagram is at Kirkby underscore Helen. So that would be K I R K B Y underscore H E L E N. So that is it. Helen, thank you so, so much for being here and uh, sharing the brazen serpent with us and talking about, you know, how your writing evolves in sort of taking it from a, a real abstract idea to something that is more generally accessible. And I think that's kind of one of those things that we as writers always need to be focusing on to be, uh, to get new eyeballs on our work. Anyway, do you have any final thoughts? Um, no, I mean, it's been a pleasure to be here. So <laughs> thank you so much, Devin. <laughs> Oh, my pleasure. Anyway, so uh, again, look out for The Brazen Serpent uh, by Helen Kirkby. And uh, anyway, this is, by the way, if you like what we're doing here at, uh, at uh, Writing Daily, make sure that you hit the like button or subscribe. We're on YouTube and uh, iTunes and a whole slew of online forums and of course here on Facebook. So I'm looking to hear, looking forward to hear from you guys and always feel free to ask uh, questions or leave comments and absolutely hit that like button and share it, especially with that favorite occultist that you have in your life. Anyway, uh, this has been uh, Helen Kirkby and Devin Galladay signing off. Thanks so much for being here. And remember, we're all here to keep writing daily. Thanks so much, everybody.